Roblox is a creative educational building game where nothing is impossible. With over 40 million daily players, they're incredibly popular and kids can even make their own games on Roblox. However, is Roblox really just a creative outlet or are young aspiring game developers being taken advantage of for their talent? Today, we're going to talk about the kids behind Roblox's games or as they call them, experiences. If they're being used by the system Roblox put in place and if Roblox can or even should do anything about it. Hello everyone and welcome to the Corporate Casket. My name is the Illuminati and today we're going to be talking about Roblox. There will be some mentions of child labor and adult language with a minor. So if these topics are upsetting for you to listen to, please feel free to skip this episode and we'll see you in the next one. Also, I wanna put another brief disclaimer here and say that as a team going into this, we were not super familiar with Roblox. So if we get any of the nuanced terms incorrect or anything like that, it's not our intention and please let us know. We are trying our best, but I am deeply unfamiliar with Roblox. Anyway, we're gonna jump right into it. And as always, begin with the background of the company. David Bazuki, one of the founders of Roblox, grew up a typical kid in Eden Prairie, Minnesota. He enjoyed riding dirt bikes, building go-karts, and was often engulfed in science fiction stories like Ender's Game. He attended Stanford for college and studied engineering and computer science while he was there. While interning at General Motors Company in Flint, Michigan one summer, he watched the engineers working with the computerized engine controls and the confluence of physical and digital structures fascinated him. This experience, as well as his past experiences in computer science and engineering, sparked his idea to create a software program entitled Interactive Physics. Interactive Physics was an educational program that allowed students to conduct physics experiments in an online 2D environment. Before long, as interactive physics expanded, Bazuki founded a company called Knowledge Revolution. This new company licensed interactive physics to schools to use for educational purposes, and also built a mechanical engineering simulator that they licensed out to manufacturing businesses that built cars, cameras, farm equipment, and copy machines. Before long, in 1998, Knowledge Revolution was bought by MSC Software Corp for a whopping $20 million, and that's around $35 million in today's money. Years earlier in 1989, while he was still the president of the Knowledge Revolution, Bazuki met his future business partner, Eric Castle, who was an engineer with the company. After MSC Software Corp had bought the company, both Bazuki and Castle began working on a project together. The duo originally came up with the idea to create a fun interactive universe for people to build and share games after watching children do creative and funny things with interactive physics. He described stories of the kids in schools and labs creating funny things, saying they were all making car crashes and buildings fall down, making really funny stuff. He discovered that while the software provided children with the groundwork to develop experiments, they usually wound up making games that they could share with their friends. So Castle and Bazuki, seeing this, developed a program designed to do just that. They began developing this idea in 2004. At first, the original beta version of the game released in 2005 was called Dynablox and was merely a puzzle building system. There was limited interaction between players. So while it may have been fun, he says there was absolutely no virality. So a little less than a year later, after making some alterations to their game that focused primarily on multiplayer gaming, they changed the name to Roblox. They added additional features in 2007 to make the platform more interactive for users, including private messaging, a search bar, ticket developers, clubs, and character customization. Roblox also offered its first form of currency called Roblox Points, which were issued as bonuses for players that logged in daily to play mini games. They later changed the name to Robux in 2007. They would also release a premium service option in 2007 entitled Builders Club. Purchasing the membership awarded players with additional Robux, trading privileges with other players and other perks. At this point, Robux could only be used to enhance your avatar or gain slight advantages in the game. It wasn't until years later that Robux could be used to make money in real life. By 2010, as the company had begun to expand, employees were spending at least one hour a week playing the game and making new ones to develop an in-depth understanding of their users' experience and develop new features. As they discussed developments to the software, executives were given dollar bills to vote on priorities. The financial officer at the time, Matt Finnick, recalls being amused and surprised that the executives were all given the same amount of money to vote on issues as CEO Bazuki said, I am a finance guy, but that's
that's the way Dave was. Years later, in 2013, Roblox launched the developer exchange program, though we don't know if the dollar voting system was used to make this development decision. This would be the first time in the six year existence of Roblox that developers of experiences on the platform would be able to earn and exchange the Robux they've earned into real life money. With the introduction of the Roblox Developer Exchange program came the advertisements by the company that people would use to perform the make anything, reach millions of players, and make serious cash on their website claims. They later changed this and removed the make serious cash part. Roblox provides their developers with service space, marketplace, infrastructure, and cross-platform capability, and the studio is free. Developers who are overwhelmingly young adults under the age of 21 can earn money through the Roblox Developer Exchange Program by designing games for others to play, among other things. They explain their earning structure for developers and the public record of their SEC documents. Developers can earn through sale of access to their experiences and enhancements in their experiences, engagement-based payouts, which reward developers for the amount of time that premium subscribers spend in their experience, sale of content and tools between developers, and the sale of items to users through the avatar marketplace. In essence, if a developer's experience rises to the top spots of the app and is used frequently, they receive Robux. They can also make money from developing and selling clothing for the avatars in the game. According to Roblox's help page under developer exchange terms and use, to cash out the Robux, users must have at least 100,000 Robux in their accounts and be over 13 years old. While the website states that people must be 13 or older to participate in the program, there have been reports of people under 13, even as young as 10, working as developers for others and earning money from other developers as their employees. People must also be subscribed to their premium membership to be able to cash out. Additionally, Roblox requires that developers have an IRS W-9 form for United States citizens or a W-8 form for non-US taxpayers. So you also have to pay taxes on any of the money you earn through the platform too. Roblox boasts about the multiple success stories coming from developers who have taken advantage of their program. According to Roblox, they have 1.7 million developers on the platform and have said to pay some of their developers over 50,000 USD a month and they have turned developing experiences in the platform to their careers, or they take what they've earned from Roblox to further their development skills through education and gain well-paying jobs in the future. And this was said in 2017, by the way, now they have close to 10 million developers. BBC released a success story about two twins who were able to pay off their parents' mortgage through developing on Roblox. When they were just 13 years old, they released their first hit game on the platform called Boat Ride. BBC never mentions if they made any money from the game. But seven years after their first game success, they have turned developing experiences on Roblox into their full-time job, making roughly 100,000 pounds a year or a little over 100,000 US dollars. One of the twins says that thanks to Roblox, they will be able to live comfortably for the rest of their lives. They will take their family on vacations, have helped their parents with their mortgage and have developed a career for themselves from the platform. As examples of just how much developing on Roblox could help improve people's lives, Roblox has also featured developer stories on their YouTube channel. One of these videos called A Roblox Story, Zoe Basil opens with Zoe stating that Roblox has always been the background force and binding thread of her life. Zoe, 20 years old, is a programmer on the Adopt Me Roblox game. Roblox has been the scaffolding to the experiences of who I am, she says, after saying how fulfilling working on Adopt Me has been for her. Who doesn't want a fulfilling, rewarding career, right? Not only that, but Zoe says Roblox was a way for her to make friends when she felt lonely, and Roblox conventions were like her tribe. When Zoe was invited to the Roblox Accelerator program, a 12 week long program where participants were given a $13,000 stipend to work full-time with Roblox and collaborate with others, Zoe found a place where she felt like she could be herself. Zoe is transgender, so as she explains, she said this was an especially important experience for her to find a place where she belonged. In another story from CJ, he states that he doesn't know where he'd be without Roblox. At 10 years old, CJ was first introduced to Roblox by his dad. He explains that he's on the autism spectrum and struggled a lot in middle school, but Roblox was a place where he could be himself and where he could be safe and create what he wanted to create. He made Superhero Life, then Superhero Life 2, which got tens of millions of plays over time. Now he's doing charity work and hoping to keep creating games that'll help others grow like it was for him. If all you hear are success stories of the developers, it may be difficult to understand just how hard it is to make any real money on Roblox or to understand how the payment structure actually works. Remember, there are roughly 10 million developers on Roblox. However, according to the company, only 1,250 developers earned $10,000 in Robux in 2020 and only 300 made 100,000 or more on the platform. 
So while it is true that it can be possible to make serious cash on Roblox, it is extremely, extremely rare and incredibly difficult to do. The exchange rate for Robux to money is one Robux to 0.0035 of a US dollar, which is about one third of a penny as of September, 2020, according to their SEC documents. So remember how we mentioned that you need 100,000 Robux to cash out? Well, at that exchange rate, the 100,000 Robux equals about $350. To make this worse, while cashing out, you can earn $350. Buying Robux is a whole different story. Buying Robux is extremely helpful to developers looking to make some money as they need them to bid for advertisements so their games can get to the top spot. So in essence, it's a pay money to make money type of situation. $100 will earn you 10,000 Robux. You can use this to bid on ad space directly through Roblox. Ads are not purchased, but rather whoever places the highest bid in the advertisement auction will get their game displayed. Hopefully with a bunch of Robux, well-placed ads and the right game, you can get to the top of the platform. So while it would take you roughly $1,000 to reach the 100,000 Robux that is required to cash out, you're not getting that much back. If the exchange rate is so low, what's the point of cashing out? That's the question Roblox is relying on developers to ask themselves, leaving their Robux in their accounts and just continuously putting them back into the game, making the company millions of dollars and leaving developers with no additional money in their bank account. One example, one Australian teenager, Jack, who told YouTuber People Make Games, who I'll talk a little bit more further on in the episode, that after making 200,000 Robux from a successful game, he spent it on two faces and a hat from the catalog. He was only 13 at the time, didn't exactly have much financial experience, but looking back, he says he deeply regrets it and said he would have used the money to improve his setup and put into savings. Jack couldn't even earn his money back because the game that he created was actually banned. Someone had uploaded tools into Roblox's toolbox, which Jack used to make the game, but the tools themselves were removed and banned, leaving Jack with nothing. Roblox claims to give their developers only 25%, not including exchange rates, membership fees, or taxes you're paying on their revenue split, and they take the remaining 75. In comparison, most other gaming apps do the complete opposite and take a 30% cut of revenue, giving their developers 70. Roblox justifies this split by saying they do this because they invest a massive amount of money and time into their infrastructure for the developers to have access to Roblox. While they may invest time and money into giving developers the tools they need to develop experiences, the developers are the reason their company exists. It's important to remember that Roblox is technically not a gaming company, they're a technology company. The games and experiences developed on their platform are done entirely by other people, not them. So without these people who are only getting 25% of the cut, their company would not exist in the first place and certainly would not be the multi-billion dollar company it is now. Let's also not forget that you have to pay for a premium membership to cash out your Robux. While it's a mere $4.99 a month for the base tier, you only made at minimum $350. Additionally, remember there are service fees and taxes to also be paid. Since Robux are considered payments for the services you have provided, it is therefore taxable income. So if a 13 year old cashes out their Robux who likely knows little about taxes, they're now considered a paid contractor and are required to relinquish some of their profits. Now that's even more of your profits, which is again, vastly less than what the company is making from the experiences made by these developers gone before it even hits your account. According to their website, you also cannot exceed an undisclosed monthly limit when you cash out and can only cash out once a month. The Roblox developer exchange terms of use is written using legal jargon and can be difficult to understand, even for adults. Additionally, Roblox does not disclose the exact transaction fees when cashing out and also does not mention the exact exchange rate for Robux money is in the terms of use or anywhere on their website. Instead, when making this episode, I had to read through their SEC documents to find their exchange rates. I think it's safe to assume that most people that enter into the developer exchange program may not be aware of the stark difference between what they would be paying to gain Robux versus what they actually receive in return. Overall, the descriptions of their terms are extremely vague and that makes me quite uncomfortable. Even more frustrating, even if you want to cash out, that can be extremely difficult too. The cash out button can be misleading. On their website, Roblox specifies that clicking the cash out button does not guarantee that you are eligible to, in fact, cash out. When you click that button, Roblox will determine if you are eligible to cash out. If that determination concludes that you are eligible, then Roblox will cash out your Robux. While you may think you've reached all the requirements to cash out, you might first have to go through an application process every single time to cash out and verify your eligibility. Needless to say, this process is complicated, which can be concerning when kids are the ones navigating it. 
One YouTube channel that put Roblox under the spotlight for these very practices recently is People Make Games, and they compare this practice to scripts, which argues that Robux is in essence a digital form of a script. And for those of you listening, that's S-C-R-I-P. Scripts were a way to replace wages in predominant coal towns years ago, and they refer to any object that is used as an alternative or substitute for legal tender. Before the 50s, when federal and state laws were altered, scripts were widely used as forms of payment in coal towns rather than actual money, and were predominantly used to exploit workers. A script was treated as an advance against unearned wages, and they were only usable by the employee who had received it and could only be used at the company stores. These types of scripts were made illegal in the 1930s, but when scripts were used, it kept the money circulating through just a few avenues without really giving someone the freedom to spend their money however they pleased. In this case, the money that developers can earn continues to circulate around and around on Roblox because, well, why would you cash out your Robux if it's worth so little elsewhere? Now, before we continue on to discuss some of the potential gambling issues and questionable games on the Roblox platform, let's take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. If you're thinking about New Year's resolutions, provide for yourself, don't deprive yourself. With Dipsy, you can focus on giving yourself pleasure, a habit you'll wanna keep all year. Dipsy Stories is an app full of sexy audio stories. And now they also have written stories. No matter what you're into or what turns you on, Dipsy helps bring the stories to life, anytime, anywhere. Close your eyes and let yourself get lost in a world where only good things happen and pleasure is the only priority. Explore your fantasies in a safe, shame-free way. Dipsy has hundreds of stories to choose from and they release new content every week. So there's always more to explore. Plus they even have wellness sessions to help you wind down and sleep sessions to help you drift off to sleep. The visual component of sexy time things doesn't really do it for me, but the audio portion most certainly does. And this is a new exciting app that is, although a little odd maybe to have for a sponsor, I'm really excited for because I think it's something that everyone can use and should be accessible. Dipsy is offering an extended 30 day free trial when you go to Dipsy dipsystories.com slash casket. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to dipsystories.com slash casket dipsystories.com slash casket. We've all got tons on our to-do lists. So one thing to get done faster is order dinner from DoorDash or lunch or groceries or household essentials. DoorDash is flexible and they'll deliver it all right to your door. DoorDash has over 300,000 partners so you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle and Cheesecake Factory. And ordering is easy. Your items will be left safely outside your door when you choose contactless delivery drop-off. So recently I was making a dinner with HelloFresh meals and I accidentally dropped the protein on the floor like a fool. And because of course I did not sweep that day, I didn't wanna eat the meat off the ground anymore. So I simply had DoorDash order me another piece of that protein and it came right to the door within 30 minutes so I could keep cooking. And for a limited time, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code CASKET. That's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the app store and enter code CASKET. Don't forget that's code CASKET for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Now, in line with the finance aspect, Roblox also has collectible items that can be sold for a limited time or for a limited number. Many people choose to spend their Robux here instead of cashing them out. Some of the incredibly popular ones are tied in with celebrities like KSI or Zara Larson. Once that sale period is over, the only way to get them is by swapping them with other users or buying them directly. As Roblox takes a 30% cut from these sale items, the more these items cost, the more Roblox makes. This makes the collectible item page similar to a stock market. Worse yet, it enables another type of market completely, the black market. There are websites cropping up that allow users to connect with each other to sell collectibles or to turn Robux into cash. They aren't hard to find either. There are YouTube videos called top three Roblox black market websites, exploring illegal Roblox websites. RTC, a Roblox news source, tweeted out in July last year that Roblox was taking legal action against a Roblox black market website, but dozens more still exist. 61 Discord servers are currently tagged with Roblox black market as of writing this. As you might expect from a site that is, well, in essence, a built-in stock market, there are plenty more financial issues that comes from this. In their rules, Roblox states that they don't allow gambling with Robux or real money, but they'll allow gambling games to using in-game coins and non-purchasable currencies. In a game called The Plaza, there are slot machines, spin the wheel, blackjack, and more. Even if you're not using purchasable money, it's still gambling. And considering how people criticize their collectible market for being good in a way to gamble away real dollars, it's not exactly teaching kids the best lessons. 
Legends. There are other adult games, some containing murder, blood, and some gore, while others like shower simulators are not safe for work in quite a few ways. And I know I'm gonna hear this concern that kids can type in anything on the internet and they can find all sorts of nasty, gross, not safe for work, fucked up shit. And in my opinion, yeah, you're right. Kids can find worse things on the internet. That is true. However, this seems so prevalent and frequent that it leads people to question if Roblox is genuinely serious about their moderation. If so, why not take more action against this type of behavior? Now, some of these types of games don't get removed right away. The Roblox mod team seemed to ban people quickly for far, far less. There's even a subreddit devoted to Roblox bans and users complaining that their ban was unjustified. One Redditor's post shows a word that they said was flagged as inappropriate and they were banned for a word. The word was not, as in N-O-T. I have no idea if there's a context that we're missing, but the ban doesn't explain the reasoning. One user said, I love his Roblox event tutorials and received a warning for directing users off platform. The word Molotov also received a warning and the words salt eh, like E-H, got a week long ban. However, this is only the tip of the iceberg in terms of questionable moderation and concerns within the community about Roblox doing enough to keep people safe. Let's get into some of that exploitation and labor involved with Roblox. Now, as you can imagine, in order to capitalize on income, there are teams of children creating these games. On Roblox's website, they have a list of community standards and state that they prohibit any content and behavior that might be inappropriate or harmful. However, Roblox can only regulate their own platform and many of these teams are on Discord servers. Some users like Just Sean C have posted in developer forums about how you can get your Roblox Discord server up and running and how to find moderators. And once you do go off platform, that's where things start to take a turn. In one portion of People Make Games videos called Roblox's Unregulated Managers, they explain that Roblox now has 47.3 million users each day, meaning more competition to be a top game. To reach these coveted spots, teams of people are working together to improve animation, scripting, modeling, and the sound of the game. There's an owner, lead developers, developers, testers, and various contributors. The People Make Games episode states, this is Roblox working as intended. During the keynote at the Roblox Developer Conference in 2018, CEO David Bazuki predicted that in the next five years, there would be a game on Roblox developed by a team of 100 people. Bigger games made by bigger teams is a sign of the platform's success. Today, more and more people who want to take their Roblox developing careers seriously develop marketable skills like animation and programming for Roblox and then leave the platform to sell their skills in a totally unregulated cluster of virtual communities mostly Discord servers signing contracts or worse, having no contract at all with bosses who might have no experience in management and might be a child themselves. Since it didn't happen on Roblox, they don't interfere or get involved. This is especially concerning because parents may not know who their child is working for, if they're being paid or treated fairly and Roblox is not protecting them. In an interview during the PMG video, one Roblox developer, Jordan, claims that he used to be paid a percentage of a game's revenue. However, the owners decided that he was making too much and made him a fixed salary employee after a game he'd worked on had been wildly successful. Jordan ultimately left, but decided not to speak out because as he claims, there's a culture in Roblox against speaking out. If you do, it'll be harder to find more work later on. Plus speaking out could potentially fall under the category of harassment in Roblox's policies too. The lack of moderation has also led to some pretty horrifying situations. PMG stated that one user, Isotoxic, apparently raided the forums linking to a child sexual abuse website and rather than moderate the forums, Roblox shut them down instead. In another interview with PMG, a young woman named Sarah, not her real name FYI, stated that she was only 12 years old when she met a developer, Doc, who was now 24 years old. Doc, despite knowing Sarah was 12, made inappropriate jokes to Sarah, sexting her, flirting with her, and allegedly telling her that it was fine for them to be doing this. While Doc later apologized for the jokes, he and his supporters said that he is not a pedophile and it was just jokes. Sarah begged Roblox to take action, but she even delivered a handwritten note to the headquarters and Doc's games are actually still up and People Make Games claims that he's still making money from it too. PMG asked Roblox about this, questioning what options a developer had if they were exploited or experienced unfair treatment and what tools Roblox provided to users to know if they were being taken advantage of. A Roblox's statement to this was as follows. Roblox takes reports of abuse very seriously and where a violation of our standards is found, we take action on our platform against the accused. This one sentence statement may come across as an action or as Roblox simply not caring about what happens to its developers when they're not on Roblox itself. The way that people make games portray the situation isn't entirely inaccurate, but it seems to paint a bleak picture of a free for all of exploitation that Roblox does not do anything about. 
I wanted to know more about this, so I decided to talk to a developer that supports Roblox to get another perspective. I'm going to call this developer RD or Roblox developer to keep their identity secure. So here's how that conversation went. Do you believe Roblox should be more involved behind the scenes with these teams of developers working on their games? Since sometimes it can be, well, you know, kids managing kids. Should that be changed? Roblox already provides enough help for the type of company that they are. You should not mistake them for a game company, but a technology company. The same way that Unity and Unreal Engine are treated. Besides, there are programs every so often but they are mainly targeted to projects that are of interest to them based on what they're working on, such as the Accelerator program, which is aimed at hearing out new interesting projects, and they have this three times a year. Artie claims that Roblox is a technology company, not a gaming company. Therefore, them telling these development teams what to do would be like a camera operator telling a writer what to do. They're not game developers, Artie says, so it just wouldn't work. We asked them about the doc situation and if Roblox should have stepped in there, but Artie argues that this would fall under Discord to investigate, not Roblox, as the messages took place there. Artie stated, Roblox can't prove or see any of Discord's data. People went to Roblox anyways for years. They tried to squash it off the site. It didn't work. Eventually, they made it so if your cow was 13 or older, you could see Discord links and such. Let's say I was a Roblox moderator I am outsourced, and I see the news and decide for myself, based off pictures of Discord chats, to ban this guy and take everything down. And maybe, just maybe, it turns out that we're photoshopped, or no laws were broken. And then, consider that I decided, as an individual, for myself, to break a policy on how I process and act against it. Do you suddenly feel safe? that I can ban you of my own choice if I believe you did something wrong and did not follow a checks and balance policy that ruined your games? And Artie raises a good point. In Sarah's case, since Doc admitted to the so-called jokes that he made and multiple other people spoke with Doc about this behavior, there's a lot of evidence to back up Sarah's timeline of events. However, mass moderation is no easy feat, nor can Roblox take effective action when these servers are on Discord. Artie asked that just because you follow something NSFW on Twitter, does that mean Roblox should ban you or terminate you because of their own rules about NSFW content? No, because that's policing outside their own domain. I see the moral gray area, but legally and politically, Roblox is in the right at the moment. Now, what if this falls into child labor? If Roblox is benefiting off a naive kid that believes you can make money doing this and has no idea of their rights as a worker? Well, to some extent, yes. But Artie argues that this isn't Roblox's responsibility to monitor these game developers either. Artie states that they personally can only afford to pay some of the people that work for them a few hundred dollars per month, but there's plenty of kids that want to make Robux. They see this as an experience to be a developer later in life, but asking Roblox to step in and handle exploitations is not possible. It's even said on their terms of service, whatever contract you sign, Roblox will not enforce anything about it and legally they shouldn't. Roblox is not their parent and should not be thought of one. Thank you, RD, for speaking with us on the matter. RD's view is an interesting side of the coin because as they've said, Roblox is a tech company, not a gaming one, much along the lines of Unreal Engine and Unity. However, if Roblox is consistently profiting off children working for them, especially if these children have been misled about how much they can earn, shouldn't that be more cause for concern? The Guardian themselves argue that Roblox is essentially profiting off child labor. Much of this is on Discord. It seems incredibly unlikely, or at least very difficult to ensure that child labor laws are being followed. The minimum age of employment, what times children can work, for how long they can work, what kind of contracts they can enter into, what protections they need as an employee, Roblox is not monitoring this at all. Maybe, as RD states, it's not up to them to monitor it, but their platform is benefiting from it all the same. That's not to say that kids should not develop games whatsoever, but these massive issues tend to stem from one thing, when money enters the picture. Now, maybe in my opinion, rules should be implemented that state you can only begin earning money when you're 18 and Roblox has to verify someone's age. You can, you know, show a photo of your like your driver's license or something like that. Or maybe they just go back to the way things were and allow kids the experience of making a game without the illusion it'll be successful and earn real money. Now, Roblox went public in 2020 and entered the stock exchange at a staggering $47 billion valuation. Reminder here, 
Roblox is making money from widely children developers creating the experiences on their site with a payment structure that makes it virtually impossible for those developers to make any money. And they are valued at $47 billion. That same year, as of course we all know, was the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, which closed down schools, businesses, and any and all out of the house activities. Unsurprisingly, this brought millions of new users to the virtual reality of Roblox for entertainment. As millions of parents across the country were forced to work from home, juggle meetings, childcare, and homeschooling, it is unsurprising that a virtual reality experience gained additional traction. According to their chief business officer, Greg Donato, Roblox saw a usage surge of 40% in March of 2020. Kids began using Roblox as a way to communicate with their friends, and some parents even started hosting virtual birthday parties for their children. Parents who are likely unaware of some of the darker sides of Roblox were believed that their children had found a safe avenue to maintain social distance while still being able to socialize with others. Roblox even started to roll out features to help educators incorporate gaming tools in their remote learning spaces. Roblox held a virtual concert on their platform in November, 2020. The concert performed by Lil Nas X, the avatar version, drew an outstanding 30 million views. But despite the company's $40 billion valuation in 2020, now valued by the way at $60 billion, the massive growth of the platform during the onset of the COVID pandemic and a reported $7 billion net worth of founder Bazuki was reported in 2021 that Bazuki, his wife, children, and in-laws used the qualified small business stock tax break at least a dozen times over the years. Now this tax break, which by the way is meant for small startup businesses, allows for people to avoid paying taxes on at least $10 million in profits. According to the New York Times, Bazuki and his wife used a completely legal strategy to skirt their taxes by gifting their shares to their four children, his mother-in-law, and even even their first cousin-in-law. The idea is that instead of one person holding all of the shares on a company and only getting the $10 million tax break, they give those shares out to friends or family members. These people then inherit the tax break and an additional $10 million becomes automatically tax-free for each person holding the shares. This strategy called stacking allows people to gain millions of dollars in non-taxable income and therefore increases their wealth. While this is not illegal, the point of the tax break established in the 1990s was for people to invest in small companies. Instead, Bazuki and his family are using it to make even more money from their multi-billion dollar company. That's billion with a B. Um, So yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and argue that uh, it's not a small company anymore. Roblox are pioneers in the online world of virtual reality called the metaverse and other giant companies like Facebook are trying to break into and admittedly the ability to virtually attend concerts, have birthday parties and social events seem pretty cool initially, whereas the era of social distancing is safe and healthy. But you know, sometimes you just miss hanging out with people. But the real question here is, are they doing it the right way? With a company that is reliant on mostly children to build the experiences they rely on for their metaverse to work, the near impossibility of those developers getting paid fairly for their work and increasing instances of inappropriate sexual behavior or violent content appearing on the platform, that question is virtually impossible to ignore. If you'd like to learn more, I've also linked People Make Games in the description down below. They are largely responsible for breaking the story and I highly recommend you check them out for more information than what I've provided today. But with all of that being said, I wanna thank you for making it to another corporate casket. I hope you learned something new today. And if you did, make sure you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date on all the latest episodes. I appreciate you spending some of your time here with me today, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.